What's up folks, welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi and this is another data sheet deep dive. Today we're jumping into the new and improved Tyranid faction and talking about a data sheet that is gonna be a mainstay for armies after their June 2024 update. In this case being the Moloch. As always in this video series, we're gonna be talking about this data sheet in specific, synergies that you can use alongside it within the faction, alongside ways that you can defeat Molochs. So let's dive in. Now on its top line profile, the Moloch is a relatively resilient monster. While it's not the hardest unit to kill, it does come in at a respectable toughness 10 with a fairly average three plus armor save and 14 wounds. That compares it to a lot of sort of medium battle tanks. Things like Space Marine Gladiators are very similar defensively to Molochs, but this thing does have more wounds than they do. That's kind of counteracted by the fact that the Moloch is almost entirely a melee oriented fighter. It's not gonna be in the back line shooting your opponent. And most of the time it's gonna be liable to be counter punched or shot with close range weapons. So these guys, while they do look fairly defensive, are not actually that hard to kill. That gets made apparent once we take a look at their weapons. They are equipped entirely with melee weapons and those melee weapons are keyed to killing light to medium infantry. The big headliner here are its scything talons, which come in at a relatively staggering 16 attacks, hitting on threes at strength eight, AP2 for one damage. That strength eight is a little deceiving however because with the new updates to the faction and their synapse ability they can be pumped to strength nine when the Moloch is in synapse range and that makes it actually pretty good at dealing I wouldn't say crippling damage but at least dinging the paint off of medium vehicles things like rhinos and other APCs can get damaged by these guys once they're appropriately buffed up they also have a bizarre distensible jaw attack this is a single three damage attack at strength five AP zero but comes in with the anti infantry four plus devastating wound and extra attack keyword. That means that it gets made alongside the scything talon attacks. So you always get the opportunity to bite with its jaw as long as it's fighting. On a critical wound, it can inflict three mortal wounds instead of its normal damage. And that critical wound is triggered against infantry on a four up, giving it the ability to just wholesale consume most heavy infantry in the game. Any three wound model is gonna get one tamped by this guy and force down its gullet on a four plus, assuming they have the infantry keyword. Now also important for the Moloch are its keywords. It is a monster, which does restrict its maneuverability a little bit. It can't go through walls. And while it does have a relatively quick movement of 10, once it's on the battlefield, it is going to have a little trouble maneuvering around the table. However, as we'll discuss later on in this video, most of the time we're going to be trying to bring these guys in and out of reserve. So that movement isn't always going to be used. On top of that, it is a Vanguard Invader. This is another update in the June 2024 balance data slate that made the Moloch significantly more playable, specifically in the Vanguard Onslaught Detachment. That Vanguard Invader keyword gives them access to a bunch of Vanguard Invader effects, and we will discuss those once we move on to Detachment Synergies. Now, those synergies mostly act alongside its Terror from the Deep ability. Now, the Moloch has baked in the Deep Strike ability, so it's able to start the game in reserve and come out of reserve anywhere on the battlefield nine inches away from enemies. Importantly as well, if you have an effect that puts this guy into Strategic Reserve, you can also use the deep strike ability to come back in, then also triggering terror from the deep. Now, what does that terror from the deep do? This is where the real value of the Moloch becomes apparent. Each time it's set up on the battlefield using the deep strike ability, you roll a d6 for each enemy unit within 12 inches. On a two through four, the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. On a five plus, it suffers three mortal wounds flat and must take a battle shock check. Obviously on the roll of a one, it's gonna miss and not do anything. This allows the Moloch to essentially pulse out a mortal wound effect to everything within that 12 inch range when it comes out of reserve. To be fair, the deep strike must set up the Moloch nine inches away from enemies. So realistically, you only have what is essentially a three inch ring that starts nine inches away from the Moloch between nine and 12 inches of enemies that are going to be affected by this. But it just requires that you clip an enemy unit with that range. If they are within that ring, then they have the opportunity to suffer this damage. Now, because of the sort of narrow band at which enemies get affected by Terror from the Deep, it can be a little difficult to apply, especially with the physical size of the Moloch. These guys are on large 120 millimeter oval bases. And so, especially if you're setting up multiple Molochs on the table, it can be difficult to actually put many enemy units inside that range. And the five up result, forcing a Battleshock check, is in supremely important because you can use multiple Molochs to 
to potentially stack additional Battleshock checks onto an enemy over and above what they would normally be suffering thanks to other turreted Battleshock delivering abilities. Now, Terror from the Deep being a Deep Strike ability means that it has special synergy with the core stratagem Rapid Ingress. This allows you to bring in a unit in your opponent's movement phase rather than your own movement phase, and with the ability to deal damage, as long as you're representing Deep Strikes, your opponent has to be constantly be thinking about where these models are coming down, but oftentimes they're coming down and simply standing there for the opponent's turn before going on to your movement phase and moving themselves. If your opponent has low wound count models, whether that be small characters or units that are low on wounds, a Moloch dropping in in their movement phase to potentially kill them can flip an entire turn on its head. In addition, if the Moloch is able to inflict battle shock in your opponent's turn, that is not only going to affect them for their turn, but also through your own turn. So if they do get that battle shock trigger on a five plus, they can prevent your opponent from using offensive stratagems on their own units. They can potentially even using defensive stratagems on your own turn or even prevent them from doing things like completing actions or scoring secondary objectives. The ability to drop this guy in and threaten those battle shock shacks is supremely important with the Moloch, and it's definitely something to keep in mind as you are playing with these guys. This can combo together with all of the battle shock synergies that Tyranids have. You can reduce enemy leadership values a variety of different ways in order to make those battle shock shacks easier to fail, and you can also benefit from battle shocked enemies with units like the Neurolictor. So as we move on to talking about other unit synergies, let's discuss some ways that we can capitalize on this Terror from the Deep effect. As I mentioned before, the first one is going to be that Neurolictor. As soon as an enemy is battle shocked, these guys turn on your entire army against it, and playing a lot of detachments, you can stack multiple instances of battle shock to try to force your opponent to fail. If they start the turn within 12 inches of the Neurolictor, you can force one in your command phase, then in your movement phase, potentially force additional ones by rolling rolling that five plus with Molochs. And if you are dropping three Molochs and they can all get within 12 inches of that enemy unit, you have a very reasonable chance to be forcing at least one battle shock check from those guys. On top of that, units like the Death Leaper can apply a minus one leadership aura within six inches, making those battle shock checks even harder to pass. If those battle shock checks are failed, in addition to the Neurolictor aura, there are several other synergies within the Tyranid faction that can trigger. Units like Zoanthropes and their units unit champion, the Neurothrope, for example, can apply additional mortal wounds to enemies that fail battle shock checks, allowing you to stack a bunch of mortal wounds in some detachments and in some very specific situations. Forcing those additional battle shock checks is definitely useful, but generally speaking, the big value of these guys is their ability to plink enemies with that essentially unsavable mortal wound output without having to roll any attack rolls. You just have to get within 12 inches with that deep strike, and you're almost automatically dealing mortal damage, which can help change the math of other Tyranid units in their favor. Backing that up with shooting from units like Exocrines or Tyranofexes means that a Tyranid army can soften up enemy units by tremoring the ground underneath them with Molochs before finishing them off with that heavier shooting. And Molochs certainly help set up the mass ranged attacks that the Tyranid backline can provide. In addition, Tyranid leadership can also buff these guys. There are a lot of stratagems that you want to be using on Molochs once they are on the table. So having Hive Tyrants nearby, whether it's the Winged Hive Tyrant or the Foot Hive Tyrant, to provide their aura of stratagem discount certainly helps. Helps. Once they are on the table and they want to get stuck into melee, having a Neuro Tyrant within 18 inches allows you to affect them with a Neuroloid, automatically applying Synapse to the unit, meaning that they do get that plus one strength, which is fairly important against a lot of defensive profiles that I mentioned earlier. Now, the big synergies for the Moloch don't necessarily come from other Tyranid data sheets. Typically, they will be coming from the huge selection of detachments available to them. Now, I'm not going to bury the lead here. The addition of Vanguard Invader to the Moloch makes them supremely effective in the Vanguard Onslaught detachment, and I'll talk about all of the ways that they can benefit from the detachment momentarily, but we will run through the other detachments very quickly. Crusher Stampede is okay for them because they are monsters, and it is the monster-focused detachment. Getting hit and potentially wound bonuses on a high-volume unit from the detachment ability is already good, as well as the new and improved OC bonus that the detachment can give them, so they are good at jumping onto the table, applying mortal wounds to enemies, and then the next turn taking objectives if your opponent doesn't actually kill them. They can also buff their kind of mediocre damage output by getting hit rerolls, mortal wounds on the charge, and automatically exploding once they die from the stratagems in the detachment, obviously making them very synergistic, which just makes sense. Assimilation Swarm tends to like high wound count units thanks to their ability to regenerate them, and the Moloch does sort of fit that profile fairly well. You also want relatively aggressive units that can be 
be destroyed and then recycled into healing for your other unit. So Moloch's jumping in front of your opponent, even with effects like Rampant Ingress and then being destroyed to trigger those stratagems is an interesting synergy, although Moloch's are not the most efficient unit you could be doing that with. Synaptic Nexus loves to be forcing Battleshock checks on enemies. You can deal additional mortal wounds if Battleshock checks are failed using Smothering Shadow, and you can make those Battleshock checks easier to fail by comboing the Dirge Heart of Karas for an additional minus one leadership effect on top of any other ones that you would be including in the army. Not to mention the fact that the Synaptic Nexus detachment abilities are also fairly good for a big unit like a Moloch. And you can get rerolls or hit bonuses for this guy from Stratagems and the ability to fall back and charge, all of which are pretty nice. Invasion Fleet also has good synergies with most Tyranid data sheets and can certainly positively affect the Moloch as well. Hyper Adaptation granting sustained or lethal hits to a super high volume attack like the Moloch's 16 Scything Talent attacks is definitely super useful and being able to trigger those criticals on fives, the Adrenal Surge, for example, can also help improve their damage output. Not to mention the fact that Rapid Regeneration allows them to deep strike fairly aggressively and then potentially survive the swing mech, especially if they are in synapse range. But all that being the case, these synergies are fairly standard. Most here in the units can benefit from almost everything that I mentioned here. Vanguard Onslaught, however, is really where Molochs shine. And this is the detachment that I would be looking to include these guys more often than not. I would actually be less excited about taking Molochs in other detachments because the Vanguard Invader keyword makes them ludicrously synergistic inside this detachment. And this detachment having a focus on deep striking effects and the ability to redeploy units makes them synergize perfectly with Molochs. These two were basically built for each other to the point that it was a travesty that they didn't have Vanguard Invader before the June 2024 update. But now that they do, oh boy, is this a lot. So first of all, the detachment gives the Molochs the ability to advance and charge. That is good on its face. With a high base movement, Molochs can jump in on the table. If your opponent's not able to kill them on the crackback, they can then actually have a pretty reasonable threat range to take their objectives and move aggressively forward, which is fairly nice. However, the big interaction is between their stratagems. Invisible Hunter allows up to two Vanguard Invader units to, at the end of your opponent's fight phase, be placed into strategic reserve, assuming that they're more than three inches away from enemies. And to be fair, Molochs are oftentimes counterpunched after the deep strike and end up within three inches of enemies, so they aren't always able to be selected by this stratagem, but when they are, you can put two Molochs back into reserve, then in your subsequent movement phase, redeploy them to deal additional damage to your opponent. This allows you to repeatedly deal damage with Molochs. You can be constantly dropping two of them, inflicting those mortal wounds, then placing them back into reserve and recycling them through the system. The stratagem also simply puts them into strategic reserve, and as I mentioned before, a unit in strategic reserve can deep strike using its deep strike ability, but it doesn't specify when they have to come back, which allows you to hold them for a later turn if you really need them to, or even hold them to rapid ingress. In addition to that, you can also use the Seeded Broods stratagem to bring Monlocks in during the first battle round, even when it would normally be illegal. Typically, reserves cannot arrive during the first battle round thanks to mission restrictions. However, Seeded Broods overrides that. That allows you to drop two Monlocks and your opponent in potentially the top of the first round, pinning them in their deployment zone and dealing them additional damage really early on in the game. And there are oftentimes some situations where you can use these Molochs for one CP to drop two of them in an aggressive position and damage enemy screens or forward operators before your opponent has had a chance to move to screen them out. Given that the Moloch is a unit based around dealing most of its damage by deep striking on the enemy, the ability to deploy them earlier on in the game and redeploy them over the course of the game makes Vanguard Onslaught the number one detachment for the Moloch. But that's not even all the synergies that this unit has with that detachment. There are also multiple ways to protect the Moloch once it drops in. Even if you're dropping in aggressively in front of your opponent, you can use Hypersensory Cilia to run it away after an enemy unit moves up to engage it. Unseen Lurkers also gives you a lone operative effect that has been reduced to an 18 inch range rather than the 12 inch range that the original printing of the stratagem says thanks to the balanced data slate. But that still means that enemy long range guns will oftentimes not be able to attack the Moloch even if you've placed it somewhere around the middle of the table. Not to mention the fact that as a Vanguard Invader unit, Molochs are a good outlet for surprise assault. This allows you to force additional battle shock checks on enemies and potentially give them hit and even wound bonuses, which can make that high volume attack even better. In my opinion, the changes to the Moloch have kind of redefined how Vanguard Onslaught ends up playing. And I do think that at least one or two Molochs are gonna be a staple in this detachment moving forward. So knowing how to deal with them is going to be crucially important if you are gonna be seeing this detachment 
attachment in your local playgroup. So with that, let's move on to how to beat Molochs. Now, Molochs are a unit that is based around the Deep Strike ability, so normal defenses against Deep Strikes do work against them, and unlike the Trigon, they have no way to set up closer than 9 inches to enemies. This means that screening can be incredibly important, and especially screening with anti-Deep Strike effects. If you have abilities like Omni Scramblers, for example, that prevents enemies from setting up within 12 inches of you, you can be entirely immune from the Molochs there from the Deep. It's actually impossible for a Moloch to affect you with their ability if they can't set up within 12, because obviously you aren't within 12. If you have important units that you don't want to get mortal wounded or you don't want to get that potential battle shock check forced on them, screening at least three inches in front of them will prevent the Moloch from being able to affect them. So sort of bubbling out your screening units from your more important units more aggressively than you would do so to just protect against a charge, for example, is very important. On top of that, it's also important not to give them more than a couple units to affect with that drop. Once they tear from the deep and start hitting three or four units, the Molochs can accrue immense amounts of value very quickly by spreading damage. However, aggressive screening and keeping your units behind those screens means that Molochs won't be able to hit too many units with them. And it's important to keep in mind that you don't give them too many things to hit, especially too many important things to hit, so you're limiting the amount of additional damage that you're receiving from that ability. So effects or defensive profiles that are resilient to mortal wounds are also very useful. If you have a feel no pain against mortal wounds or a strong feel no pain in general, that is going to mitigate the the amount of damage that you're receiving from this. On top of that, low value units, chaff infantry or utility units are good at receiving mortal wounds because their points per wound are very low. What you don't want to be doing is getting those mortal wounds applied to heavy vehicles or models with strong defensive profiles. Instead, you want to be taking them on your lighter units, your utility units that you don't really care about because mortal wounds against those units don't typically matter too much. There's also a lot you can do with mortal wound allocation. Obviously, this is not mortal wounds from the hazardous or devastating wound abilities, so these things are going to apply to to the unit, not to a specific model, and they are going to carry over models that are destroyed. However, a thing to keep in mind is that the Moloch is applying this damage not only in the order it is setting up on the battlefield, but also after the entire Tyranid army has already moved. This means that if the Moloch is applying this damage to units that only have a few models in line of sight, or that are the edge of the Tyranid charge range, for example, you can assign mortal wounds to the models in the front of that unit that are in danger of being shot, and potentially, especially if the Molochs overperform and do lots of damage to your units, either pull them out of the potential range of future Moloch drops, or even pull them out of enemy shooting or charge ranges. For example, if you have a unit that an enemy Exocrine or Tyranifex can see one or two models of, and the Moloch drops in next to them and kills one or two models with its Terror from the Deep, you can pull the models that that ranged monster can see, and suddenly the unit is not going to get shot by them. Similarly, if the Tyranid player has moved up to charge a unit, and the Moloch drops in and does some damage, pulling the front rank of that unit will make that charge longer for the Tyranid player. This is a pretty standard defense against a lot of ranged attacks, and the Moloch is essentially a kind of indirect fire ranged attack, if you can think of it that way. So with that, that's all I have to say about the Moloch. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about this monster and its newfound inclusion in Tyranid armies. Big thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Thanks as well to everybody who supports Tactical Tortoise, either over on Patreon at patreon.com slash Tactical Tortoise. YouTube channel members, you can join in the link down in the video description as well as Twitch subscribers. All you people are amazing, and I absolutely love you. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.